Um, and I'm not talking about, you know, the dollar bill or whatever, but maybe that works too. I'm talking about emotional, personal connections. And um, because this thing brought me so near to death several times, uh, I've started to look at that and realize that the most important thing in this life is spiritual and, and contact, human emotional contact, or with animals, with plants, but, but contact, you know. Um, anyway, uh, it, see, that's the thing about this experience. It, it's had so many aspects, so many things have happened that, that it's almost impossible to relate them all. Um, as far as technology, uh, excuse me, directed energy weapons. Um, we believe that they have been using, making full use of a new class of weapon. Most of you have probably, well, some of you have probably heard of them. They call them non-lethal weapons. It's basically something that the army wants uh, to be an option between talking to you and shooting you dead. And so these are weapons that are in between those two things. Um, Petra and I uh, were many times laying in bed and we would get zapped. <laughs> these little, felt like little shocks on our skin, all over our bodies. And it would make us jump and it hurt. And uh, sometimes we would wake up with big burns on our faces and on our skin. I mean, if you look, uh, I don't know if you can see it, this light. You know, if you look at the skin of my head, uh, see how it's all discolored like that? Well, that didn't used to be that way. Uh, it used to be normal like everybody else's, but it's my belief that this is discoloration due to radiation. Um, there were times where, you know, I would be sitting, one time I was sitting this person's house and I was using my phone and I had the stylus in my hand and, uh, and I'm using the phone and the stylus melted in my hand, literally melted and uh, I was being bombarded with some kind of microwave radiation from outside so I got up and left but um, these kind of weapons exist they leave no trace other than if they turn them up high enough to actually ionize the cells um, but there's no way to tell you know what what it came from um, I guess you know at some point in the future there'll be uh, may even exist now excuse me forensics that are able to determine you know whether something was caused by microwave frequency heating or whatever but um, these things hurt and they can be fatal uh, we've gone through tremendous headaches we've been electrocuted we've been poisoned gas they another thing they do and a lot of people complain about this is they knocked us unconscious almost as if they had a ray or a gas they would put in the room and boom, you would just fall out your head would hit the desk and, and you'd be unconscious and they could do whatever they wanted to you and then they would wake you up later uh, they did this a lot um, when they wanted to come in the room and do stuff or you know, they would come in the room while we were there and take things. They would take things while we weren't there. Little things, you know, they would move things around. Um, there was uh, the craziest stuff. There was um, this black, silvery black mist, a whitish mist that was blowing into the room all the time through the cracks and the crevices in the floor. And it left a silvery black whitish dust on everything that you could see like if you wiped it with a dark cloth or if you stuck a piece of clear tape to it and, and this dust was everywhere that we breathed it in it was all over our bodies and and my belief is that um excuse me by using uh, some sort of static electromagnetic field that this dust is addressable, like each particle of dust, smart dust, and you can tell it this piece of dust move here, this piece of dust move there, with significant motive force. Um, they had some kind of high voltage machine downstairs that 
made this field and you could feel the field. Pedro would call it the Van de Graaff field. You would feel it. All your hair would stand up on ends. It would make you angry and frustrated and and uh, they could make the this dust move around and what they did was they somehow got it all under the floor, under the walls, by the bed, and they were going this really deep sound, and literally they were moving the walls of the room, you know, by about a half an inch to an inch. I had some video of it. Um, the bed was attached to the walls, and it was so strong. I put a two by four between the bed and the wall, and the movement of the bed was so strong it actually pushed the two by four through the wall. Um, and they kept moving it back and forth. They pushed all the walls in tighter in the room to make everything smaller and tighter, or possibly to make space for someone else to move around behind the walls. Because literally, we would hear these people go. It sounded like these people going up and down on ladders in the walls. Blah, 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 blah. Now, whether that was just an illusion or not, there was actually, we poked holes in the walls and there was space in there. You could see there was like five feet behind this, this walls. Uh, one of the guys who worked there said the room we lived in was quote unquote very special. Um, I don't know. It was, you know, that was crazy enough. They also gave us a mattress that was completely full of this powder, this black dust and whenever we would try to sleep this bed would move literally underneath you like they knew where our body was touching the bed and they would push the bed around to make it the most uncomfortable thing uh, Pedro would call it the craftmatic adjustable bed she's like you gotta ride the wave you gotta ride the wave and I'm like oh my back is all sore uh, you know so that contributed to the sleep deprivation it, it was horrible this bed went on for months and months then the insects oh my god the insects uh, they started with fleas okay I think the fleas excuse me I have tobacco in my mouth I think the fleas were just to cover up the other insects okay they seem to use insects that that I don't even know if they came from this planet or they were genetically made to actually attack us. Um, there were, uh, we think chiggers, sand fleas, they go into your skin, they lay eggs. There were things that would go into your skin, they would climb into your pores. There were little things that looked like little tiny pieces of hair. And they would literally climb into your pores, under your fingernails, and wiggle around under there, and they really hurt. There were these other things that had these little red glowing eyes, these two red eyes and a nose and a mouth. They would stick their tails into your skin and and um, they would sit there with their heads outside of the skin looking at you with these eyes that you could look at and they would, you know, they would look at you. You could see there was some intelligence in these creatures. They were there in your skin, their eyes looking at you. It was freaky. Um, we had some kind of worm things that seemed to be moving around inside of us. We had um, what I call nematodes or something. These things were almost invisible to the naked eye. They looked sort of grayish, clearish, and they could be anywhere from a fraction of an inch to uh, over an inch long. And they seemed as though they could jump off of surfaces, like jump off the table into your eye. And, and if you got them in time with the tweezers or your fingers or something, you could pull it as hard as you could. Oh, you'd be wrestling and this thing is trying to climb into your skin. And sometimes you'd get it out and sometimes they'd get in. And, and, and they, what 